I spent over $6,000 building the ultimate shiny hunting setup. The question is, can my army of consoles stand up against the power of a sparkling level 3 sandwich? Or have Pokemon Scarlet and Violet sent shiny inflation rates spiraling out of control? I've always said that shiny hunting is a pay to win game, but in 2023, is that still the case? If I buy more consoles, I see more Pokemon. If I see more Pokemon, I see more Shinies. So with a small loan of $6,000, what would the ultimate Shiny Hunting setup look like? Shiny Hunters have discovered various ways to multi-hunt, which is Shiny Hunting across multiple systems at once. It isn't too different from multi-boxing in WoW, except instead of looking for rare loot and XP, you're looking for differently colored pixels. Shiny Chansey! Oh my god! Oh, what? Setting up a whole bunch of consoles and controlling them individually can work, but I'd rather not get arthritis before 30. So we're going to need to find a way to easily control numerous systems simultaneously. Controlling multiple systems at once with a single input is a little bit challenging without system modifications. But luckily, I had a few ideas in mind. The first was this. The Dance Dance Revolution Dance Mat for the Nintendo Wii. This bad boy connects to consoles using the standard GameCube port and sends inputs just like a regular GameCube controller. To control multiple systems at once, we just stack a bunch of dance mats on top of each other. Four is usable, and we've managed to find a couple different shiny Pokemon with it. Unfortunately, there is a limit to how many mats you can stack before it becomes nearly unusable. So for scalability, we need something a little more elegant. Another option was the Konami Hyper Beam, an infrared wireless controller for the Super Nintendo. The SNES is great because we can use the Super Game Boy to play Game Boy and Game Boy Color games, but that leaves our options pretty limited since we'd pretty well only be able to shiny hunt in Pokemon Gold and Silver. So our $6,000 shiny hunting setup is going to utilize Nintendo Wavebird. This magical little piece of technology uses radio frequencies to send inputs from the controller to the console. Since these signals don't require a handshake like a Bluetooth connection would, it's possible to use one Wavebird to control multiple systems at once. We can use this nifty little trick on the Nintendo GameCube, the Wii, or even the Nintendo Switch. All we need is enough receivers to host a Smash tournament. With a controller figured out, let's look for the best console to use for this setup. The Nintendo 64 could play Game Boy Advance, Game Boy, and Game Boy Color games and even has access to the Dodrio Game Boy Tower to speed up the gameplay by up to four times. But they don't have anywhere for us to put our wave birds. The Nintendo GameCube has a couple of Pokemon titles that we could hunt in, but they aren't exactly the fastest for shiny hunting. My soft resets ended up being between four and six minutes each. But what if we were able to boot up the handheld games on the GameCube? For that, Detel had us covered with the Advance Game Port, a laggy, buggy Game Boy Advance emulator for the Nintendo GameCube that can be found on eBay for just $125. For this? Nah, there has to be a better way. Which is where this little doohickey comes in. Just pop it into the connection slot of a GameCube, and the Game Boy player can turn any GameCube into a very big Game Boy Advance. There's just one problem. They have gotten very expensive, like out of our budget expensive, is what I would say if you needed to buy the disc for each console. The startup disc is the most expensive part of the Game Boy Player, but like the name entails, it's only needed for startup. So you can just pop it into a console, boot up the Game Boy Player, swap it out to a new GameCube, then rinse and repeat until everything is booted up. So with a basic idea of what we're assembling, let's break down the budget. To see as many Pokemon as possible, we need as many games running as possible. So we're going to be running not two, not four, not eight, but 16 Nintendo GameCubes, which is a totally normal and not insane number of consoles to own. So hold on to your angry comments for now. I started off by swinging by my favorite game store here in Toronto, GameSwap. They sell GameCubes for $120 each, which 
isn't exactly ideal, but that's where we're at in this cold post-pandemic world. We can also get Wavebirds there for $100 each, and since I really only care about the dongles, we can trade the extra controllers back in for in-store credit. Although, despite the fact owning 16 GameCubes is completely reasonable, I did have to go to a few stores before I had enough consoles for this project. Next, we need some Game Boy players. Since we only need one disc, most of our search can focus on grabbing these Game Boy player attachments. On eBay, each of these will run us about 60 bucks. But since Game Boy Player Discs seem to have this magical ability to disappear, they're rarer and pricier. So just getting one is going to cost us about $200. That makes up most of the hardware, but in order to encounter Pokemon, I need Pokemon games. Right now, Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green sell on eBay for around $100 each. But I decided to look around and buy one copy of each game for every available language, which saved a little bit of money. There are six different languages that these games are translated to, so that covers 12 copies. With a few extra English copies, we're at 16. Luckily, I also saved some cash here since my good friend What the Shiny sent me a German copy of Pokemon Leaf Green. Okay, great. We have all of our consoles, we have our games, and now we just need to turn everything on. Right. A Game Boy has that little screen built in, but GameCubes don't and it would be difficult to do much shiny hunting without being able to see what the games are doing. I fluffed around with a few ideas for this. Intech used to make these little clip-on screens, but they're a tad expensive. Under the guidance of CRT King Shank mods, I considered these stackable Sony Triniton PVMs, but unfortunately, when I arrived at the warehouse, they were almost all dead. So in order to see what the GameCubes are up to, we went with a stack of HDMI adapters, and this wonderful piece of technology here. This is a 16x1 HDMI multi-viewer. Much like my ex-girlfriend, it can take up to 16 inputs at once and output them as a single video output. Who wrote that? That doesn't even make any sense. <laughs> once she's been filled up, we can move our startup disk around like the player it is and take a look at the beautiful site that is 16 times shiny hunting. Though with pets around, the current setup seemed a little bit too dangerous to leave lying around. That's where the GameCube table comes in. We grabbed ourselves a table with this nifty box inside, which is perfect for holding our OSHA approved daisy chain of power bars, and drilled holes to feed all the cables around, and stacked up all 16 GameCubes. Underneath, I created a monstrous rat's nest of wires to feed each video signal into an HDMI adapter and then out to the multi-viewer. As a gamer, I know nothing is complete without RGB, so we added a few LEDs to make everything pop. Ta-da! The ultimate shiny hunting setup. Well, it would have been, but I kept randomly dropping inputs and that just wasn't going to cut it. So, I raided my mom's collection of John Grissom novels stacked up the GameCubes so that each Wavebird receiver wasn't being blocked by the GameCube in front of it, and then we had the ultimate shiny hunting setup. Have you ever wondered how I afford all these consoles? The answer is, I can't. That's why today's video is brought to you by... me. Please subscribe me. Like the video, Follow us over on Twitch and join our Discord. So hopefully I can keep doing fun stuff like this long enough to maybe break even. When you get to the end of the video, if you liked it, share it with a friend and drop a comment of your favorite part of the video. Anyways, let's get back to our regularly scheduled programming. With each Wavebird receiver set to the same channel as my controller, we now have the power to see Pokemon at up to 16 times the speed of those filthy casuals with their single console. In Generation 3, most encounters go off of a 1 in 8192 shiny odd. With this many consoles, it's more like 1 in 512. With the ultimate shiny hunting setup complete, for now, like and subscribe if you want to see what's over there, it's time for some science. Step 1, we have a question. Can this army of consoles defeat the power of a sparkling level 3 sandwich. Now we need to come up with a hypothesis. So on Chespin Community Day, I hit the street to ask the average Pokemon fan what they thought the outcome would be. What would find more shiny Pokemon more faster? But you are like familiar with shiny Pokemon and stuff. Okay, now I'm gonna ask you a question. 
Out of these two things that we see here, which one do you think would find more shiny Pokemon more faster? Well, clearly this is a trick question because why would you present a sandwich as one of the options unless it was the correct answer? So you're gonna say the sandwich is the correct answer? I think I have to or I'll be I'll look stupid. Of these two options, which one did you do you think would find more shinies more faster? Like the objects? Of uh, like the game cubes? Or the thing or the same? 16 game cubes. The sandwich. Why do you think that? Because in the game mechanics of the new game, sandwiches can help increase shiny rates. Do you think that it increases it more than 16 game cubes at once? That's 16 times the chance to find one shiny. I don't know. We'll go with the sandwich. I'm probably. That's two vote sandwich, one vote game cubes. You are familiar with the concept of shiny Pokemon then? Of course. Okay. Of the two options you see before you, what do you think would find more shiny Pokemon more faster? That's 16 game cubes or a sandwich? And I'm guessing uh, 16 game cubes were, were little, yeah, 16 game cubes. They're all playing like Fire and Leaf Green. Yeah, yeah, like Fire and Leaf Green, yeah. Oh god, with the 8,000? Um, even like with the 16 times, I still feel like you'd be more likely with the sandwich. Oh my, okay, yeah. Three vote sandwich, one vote game cubes. Stop having them sniff the sandwich. Enjoy the, 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 there's a hair on the sandwich, sorry about that guys. I'm literally voting over. We have 16 game cubes or a, a sandwich? Tough call. Um, the sandwich. Okay, Rohan is sandwich. I'm going with the underdog, the GameCube. He's going with the underdog, the $6,000 GameCube setup. More faster? Yeah, more shinies, more faster. More faster. More shinies, more faster. Not faster, just more faster. More, more faster. I'm gonna go ahead and say the sandwich. The GameCubes. The GameCubes. 16 GameCubes, probably better than a sandwich. There we have it. I'm gonna go with the uh, the OG purple GameCube. The GameCube. Um, first question for you. How long have you been a Pokemon fan? Uh, 16 months. Which of the two do you think is more likely to find shiny Pokemon quickly? I think the 16 games. What do you think? Uh, lettuce, tomato, and... No, no, that's an Herba, Herba Mystica. Herba Mystica. We got Herba Mystica in there. Herba Mystica. I think it's a sandwich. Dan thinks it's the sandwich. Now, if our hypothesis is correct, the shiny sandwiches are gonna find more shinies more faster. But if it's incorrect, the game cubes are gonna take the cake. Step three of the scientific method is testing. So I teamed up with my brother, Professor Tops, in a no holds barred shiny race for all the marbles. The rules were simple. Whichever setup found the most shinies in five hours would be permanently declared as the scientifically most inflated shiny hunting setup. Would $6,500 be money well spent? Or did I spend my life savings on a bunch of outdated and useless tech? ...of irradiated fuel bundles that if you touch the water, it'll kill you. Hey, there's, oh. there's our first shiny. That gives me a pretty good quick advantage against tops. This is a really big Dunsparce as well. That's okay, I can catch back up. You got this still? Yeah. Have I backed up the bot recently? No, I probably should. Oh my god! Wait, what? Oh! <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> nice! So how are you supposed to know it's shiny? It's just the white body? The white body. Dude, that is a pain in the ass, man. Wait, oh, yeah, is that a shiny, shiny combi? combi? Dude, imagine. Man. Female! Oh, female! Oh my Female God. shiny Kobe! <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, yo! Another shiny. Oh my gosh. Imagine. Another Kobe. It's male, though. It's male. It's male. Yeah, that's a male one. That's three shinies Shiza. so far for our sandwiches. Like, including, like, somehow making milk and things. <laughs> oh, shiny Machop! Whoa! I did it! Oh my gosh, you're almost caught up there! Let's go! Let's go! <laughs> a minor ball. <laughs> well, he is a little minor. Look at him. He's just a little guy. Nice. Nice. 
Oh, shiny. Oh, oh lo low kick. Lo shiny low kicks. Wow. Nice. Nice. That's He's four shinies. Oh, shiny. Oh, Venomoth. Venomoth. That's the shiny number five. Blue dog can use the bait strat on this one because yeah, it is a. It's a slightly higher you chance look, to successfully catch it if you're so running the bait strat. Gridolins, you can help me. Oh, fix shiny it. Pidgey! What? Another oh my bird. god, you're catching up! <laughs> oh, <Shit. no. laughs> nice. Okay. Oh my god, shiny Growlithe! Whoa! No way. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> what? <laughs> What? What the dog doing? <laughs> awesome. Question, Question mark. mark. Yeah. <laughs> Rex had already written it off. Like he was just evolving it I for just... the sake of evolving it. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. What's this? What's this Vespaquin doing? Wait. No, 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 no. You got to What? What? <laughs> what? What? <laughs> what? Wow. We. Oh my God. And I was so confused because I was like, I thought it was shiny, and then it wasn't, and I was like, what's happening here? <laughs> it's just spawned inside it's spawned of the other one. inside of the other one. What's that Vespaquin doing? What the Vespaquin doing? <laughs> sleepy sleepy Mark. time! Oh, he's sleepy! <gasps> There's one! We found it! <gasps> nice! Oh. Let's go! Nice! Ah, uh, so nice. I've wanted one of these for so long. Let's hope it's marked. <laughs> there you there go. There we go. We finally caught nice. it. Nice. Good job, man. It has a mark! I just can't oh, read. Oh, yeah. Yes! Birthday? <laughs> Birthday mark? Birthday Mark! Birthday Mark! <laughs> With no clear winner being immediately discernible from the testing, the final step of sciencing was needed. Analysis. Over the five-hour race, the GameCube saw a total of 11,632 Pokemon and three Shinies, which was well above the expected number of Shinies to see. The Nintendo Switch, on the other hand, with the sandwiches, found seven Shiny Pokemon, which was... Less than I had expected, but definitely enough to completely blow the GameCubes out of the water. So, after taking a closer look at the numbers, the shiny sandwiches have taken the glory, and it's indeed true that shiny inflation has been sent spiraling out of control. But wait, let's get back to the myth we were testing today. Does more money mean more shiny Pokemon? I don't think that this experiment has completely disproved that myth, just yet. After all, the graph of how many shiny Pokemon you see per hour on a Nintendo Switch looks like this. But the number of shiny Pokemon you see per hour per GameCube looks like this. We just don't have enough consoles yet. So maybe the GameCube table wasn't enough, but what if we add the Wii Shelf? I think we have a chance. Plus, the Wii Shop had a sneaky little WiiWare title that I think will give Scarlet and Violet a run for their money. $6,500 might not have been enough, but what about 11,000? If you want to see part two of my descent into madness, where I continue to throw more and more money at this problem, make sure that you hit subscribe and hit that bell icon so you don't miss that video when it goes live. If you're worried about the ultimate shiny hunting setup being a complete waste of money, don't worry. The WaveBird signal is actually strong enough for me to be able to use it from outside in the hot tub, which means I'll probably be able to make most of my money back as a hot tub streamer over on twitch.tv forward slash professors lab. Anyways, if you liked this video, make sure you watch this video up next. Oh, okay, we're getting there, we're getting there.
We're good.